<clears throat> All right, so today, yesterday, we talked about if two, if you have exponents and they have the same base, we add the exponents. Today, we're going to be talking about power raised to a power, like this example, b to the third raised to the b to the third raised to the fifth. If it, if a power is raised to a power, you're going to multiply the exponents. So go ahead, pause the video, copy down that box. Okay, so. If we need to do this, which we are going to do it here, um, I'm actually going to have you copy down one more box now that I've looked at it. So now I'll pause the video again and copy down that one. Okay, so um, my plan today is I'm going to show you a few different examples to be able to. Um, get into this thing and be able to do the best we can with a power raised to a power. So in order to do that here, well, let's start off at the very beginning. Why don't we here? If we have x squared raised to the fifth, if we have x squared raised to the fifth, that's the same thing as saying x squared times 5, which is x to the 10. Alright, so you're going to multiply the exponents together if it's a power raised to a power. Same thing if we have v to the cubed times 3, that's saying v to the 3 times 3, which is v to the 9. So far so good. Okay, I'm going to scoot this thing down. So, if a power is raised to a power, you multiply the two things together. Um, let's start getting a little bit tougher here. If we have negative 5a squared b all cubed. If you have an exponent that's raised to a multivariable or a multi-term thing here like this, negative 5a squared b, what you're going to do is you're actually going to distribute this thing to everything inside of there that has an exponent. And believe me, Every single thing inside of this has an exponent. So, what you're going to do is you're going to distribute this to all three parts, which is then going to turn into negative 5. Negative 5 has an exponent of 1, so it becomes 3. a to the 6, because 2 times 3 is 6, and b to the 6th, or negative 125 a to the 6th b to the 6th would then be your solution. Okay, so let's do another one of those like that. If we have negative 2, w to the 6th, u to the 4th, all raised to the 3rd, this becomes negative 2 to the 3rd, w, 6 times 3 is 18, and u, 4 times 3 is 12. Or it becomes negative 8, w to the 18th, u to the 12th. Okay, um, I think I'm going to do another one of them. Um, let's just make one up here. Uh, 7x x squared, y cubed, z to the 4th, all squared. That squared is going to be distributed to do everything inside of there that has an exponent. Even though this doesn't have an exponent written, it does have an exponent. The exponent's 1. We just don't write the exponent 1. So this becomes 7 squared, x to the 4th, y to the 6th, z to the 8th, because 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8. Or it simplifies down to 49, x to the 4th, y to the 6th, z to the 8th as your solution. Okay, so now let's start getting uh, and kind of putting everything we've learned so far in chapter and section 7-1 together. Um, so once again, if I have 4w squared, that w, I mean that squared goes to everything, so that becomes 16w squared, Right? Good. Okay, I'm going to get to your homework here, and I'm going to try to find a problem that is new to us here. Okay, so this is the hardest type of problem. Negative 2, 
x squared y to the fourth, all cubed, 3 xy squared z cubed. All right, before we can start to simplify this problem, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the exponent that's outside a set of parentheses, and I'm going to distribute it to everything inside of the parentheses. All right, so what we're going to have is negative 2 cubed, which is negative 8, x squared times 3, which is x to the 6th, y to the 4th times 3, which is y to the 12th. So that first set of parentheses becomes that. This side stays the same. And now we're just going to multiply these two things together. So negative 8 times 3, which is negative 24. x to the 6 times x to the 1 gives us x to the 7th. Remember, this is what we did yesterday. y to the 12th times y squared gives us y to the 14th. And then there's only a z cubed, so we just bring it down a part of the answer. And there would be your answer right there. Okay, so let's turn the thing over here and let's go and do another. Let's make it straighter like that. I don't want to do that. Okay. Let's do another one here. Okay, so this one's kind of tricky and I'm glad it, I saw this one. If we have x squared, y cubed, z cubed, all cubed, and then x squared, y, z squared. This negative sign that's out front here, right here, way out front, it has a number right here. That number is negative 1. So when we distribute this thing to everything inside of here, we also have to distribute that to the negative. Because this is going to turn into negative 1 cubed, x to the 6th, y to the 9th, z to the 9th, and then we have x squared, y, z squared that follows it. Now negative 1 cubed is just negative 1. x to the 6th times x squared gives us x to the 8th. y to the 9th times y to the 1 gives us y to the 10th, and z to the 9th times z squared gives us z to the 11th. And then this can be just rewritten like this. Negative x to the 8th, y to the 10th, z to the 11th. And there would be your solution. Okay? So these two lessons, they they, the first two lessons of the week, they coincide really well with each other. You have to know how to do both things in order to get the answers right. Um, so... Um, do your best on it. If you need help, shoot me an email. And yeah, we're good.